Hey everyone, I'm jumping into old school April about halfway through the month and I want to see how much of it I can still finish. The one thing I don't have is a book for the category of animal attack horror and that is a category I'm a little squeamish about. So I'm at Barnes and Noble and I, I just want to take a look at the shelves and see if I come across anything that's maybe a werewolf or Jersey Devil, something like that, that doesn't feel realistic or visceral but still counts as being animalish. I should be studying <laughs> for my last grad school test, for my last test ever. So of course I'm sitting in the parking lot of Barnes & Noble. Let's go in and see what they have. on my forest walk with a Barnes & Noble update and some singing birds apparently. <laughs> um, so the only book I saw that would fit was a Goosebumps shark attack book called Deep Trouble and since it's a category that I am a baby about I, I think I would just rather get it from my library so that's what I'm gonna go do when I'm done with my walk we're gonna go to the library. <music> TBR for Old School April. The first category is a Goosebumps book, so for that I'm using The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight. I have already read this. This was the book for my Goosebumps book club earlier this month. The next prompt is to read a book from the 80s, so for that I'm reading Double Love, the first book in the Sweet Valley High series. This is where we meet studious Elizabeth and snobby popular boy crazy Jessica and in this one Jessica tries to steal Elizabeth's boyfriend. Scandal! Next up we have Animal Attack which is the category that sent me on my journey yesterday. For a book about retro technology I have Say Cheese and Die again because it's about a Polaroid camera. This is the sequel to the original Say Cheese and Die which I read for my Goosebumps book club in March so I'm excited to read the sequel. For a book that has a retro mood, I'm going to be using the Saturday Night Ghost Club, which is from my April TBR LOL. I know I might end up reading a book that's actually on my TBR. Who am I? For a Fear Street book, I have this bind up of the first four Fear Street books. So I'm gonna be reading the first one. It's called The New Girl. For a book about a cursed object, I have Curse of the Wish Eater. For a book from the 90s, I'm going to be reading Dawn and the Surfer Ghost. That was always my favorite Babysitter's Club book. It's a mystery, it's a ghost story, it's one of the California ones, which means I probably misunderstood the Babysitter's Club <laughs> way back when if that one was my favorite. But in retrospect, it's not surprising that Dawn and the Surfer Ghost was always my favorite. And for the last prompt, it's the Buffy the Vampire Slayer category, but you can read any book that has a female protagonist. So I'm going to be reading Things I Can't Explain. It's the Clarissa Explains It All sequel book, and it was written by Mitchell Kragman, who created the show. It follows Clarissa in her late 20s as she's going through a quarter-life crisis. And just flipping through the book, if you remember on the show, it would always have her handwriting or pictures on the screen. That's in the book too. There's also a bonus prompt, which is to read any book that has neon colors on the cover. And for that, I have Meddling Kids. It's obviously a riff on Scooby-Doo and it's awesomely retro. 
I had been saving this for closer to Halloween, but maybe I'll get to it now. Yeah, that's wishful thinking on my part. Am I going to read all of these books by the end of the month? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not going to. But I don't care. I want to talk about books anyway. There are also a bunch of TV and movie prompts, so I'm just going to watch a bunch of Exiles episodes and finally get around to watching the Hocus Pocus sequel. And I also want to watch some Buffy episodes, I want to watch My So-Called Life, I want to watch Empire Records and Singles and Clerks, I want to watch the Hal Hartley films. We're going back to the years when people used to call me Daria, if you can believe it. It's surprising, I know. Forest update. My old school April team is the Blue Barracudas. <laughs> Some reading updates. So last night I read The Curse of the Wish Eater from the Frightville series and I don't think I'm going to read another Frightville book. I had never read anything from the series before and when I pick up a series like this I usually think even if I don't love it it might still be good to keep on the back burner for future readathons but this one did not make the cut. It didn't have the adult readability that I found in the Goosebumps books or the Sweet Valley High books, and with those I don't think it's only nostalgia doing all the work. I think there is a matter of quality in those books that makes them fun to read even if you're way outside the target demographic, and unfortunately that was not the case with this one. And today I read Say Cheese and Die Again. This is the sequel to Say Cheese and Die, and it follows the same group of kids. This book is interesting because it definitely would not be published today. The scary element of the book is that Greg, the main character, becomes really fat and he feels gross about himself. And while I don't think that everything always needs to please everyone, this just would not make it into a kid's book in the year 2023. The funny thing about these older books is that because they're not steeped in completely modern attitudes, the kids are brats. They're little shitheads. Whereas in other spooky middle grade books I've read that are more recent, you can tell the author went to therapy. <laughs> there are healthier friendship dynamics, even if they're not as realistic. So it's funny to go back and see the good and the bad of what was making it into these books for kids. On that note, Sweet Valley High. Okay, this was total fun trash. This was a really good time. But it's another one that definitely would not be published today. And I actually think that in the more recent reprints, they have gone back and edited it. And I'm not surprised. There are a lot of descriptions of the twins and their perfect blonde all-American beauty. And we just don't use that phrasing anymore, for better or worse. And the bigger issue is the way the boys act and the way it is just totally written off as normal behavior by the girls. This one character, Rick Andover, who is supposed to be the town bad boy, he says stuff like, I know you want it, and the girls react like, well, maybe I do. It's presented as an acceptable way of flirting. There's no commentary on it, but it's also not a situation where the lack of commentary is the point. The story presents those interactions as normal and almost mature to the intended teen audience. I'm not saying that everything needs to be fully sanitized or that everything always has to make everyone feel good. I'm just noting that in this book that was written and published in the 80s, there are things that today just wouldn't fly. But would I continue on in the series? Absolutely. It was a good, fun, trashy time. So those are my books for Cursed Object, book from the 80s, and a book with retro technology. I think my next book is going to be Saturday Night Ghost Club. I'm in the mood for an adult book after reading so many kid books. And now I have a question for all both of you who are watching. Do you prefer GAC 
or phloem. I'm a phloem girl myself, although I once did have popcorn scented gack that I got at Chuck E. Cheese. And yes, that is a sentence that I just said out loud. I lied. I did not start Saturday Night Ghost Club. I started a sprinkling of murder. And I regret that decision because I don't think I like this one very much. Usually I like these kinds of mysteries because there's a lot of action really quickly. And that's just not what's happening with this one. It's very slow and I'm already a hundred pages in. We'll see what decision I make tomorrow, but I might call it quits on this one. But anyway, I wrapped up my first week of old school April and I think I did okay. I took my last test ever today and I have one more assignment that's due tomorrow and maybe some small revisions throughout next week. But besides that, I am done. I have finished my master's degree and I'm just so relieved that this terrible, stressful phase of my life is over. I have so many books and movies and TV shows to catch up on, and some of my favorite bands have released albums in the past few years that I never even knew about because I was so busy and exhausted. For the immediate future, what that means is that next week is going to be a great one for Old School April. I want to try to get through all my books, and I, I want to tell the story, maybe, of how I met Blake Soper who was Pinsky on Salute Your Shorts, but th there's some weird stuff around the fringes of that story, so I need to figure out how I want to tell it. But it's funny, so I want to. That's it for now. I'll see you next week.